Without ado, let us all welcome our speaker for this afternoon, Ms. Marie France Gavin. All right. Thank you, Sir Jason, for that introduction. So I hope I'm loud and clear. So uh, medyo nag-stop naman na yung rain. So thank God for that. So I'm Miss Franz. So my clients would call me Teacher Franz or Miss Franz. So I'll be sharing with you this very relevant topic nowadays. No, Itong um, uh, recognizing anxiety and supporting young children during quarantine. All right. So, just like what Sir Jason told you kanina, so we can mute our microphone but we can turn on our uh, cameras so that parang nag-uusap lang tayo, no? Pero, but still, if not, it's okay then. Okay. And then, so for today, we'll be also doing some exercises. So, I would recommend for you to be in your parang safe space. So, when we call it safe space because so sana parang free of distractions and then you are uh, in an area where you can also do the exercises. Alright? So, and also, uh, most of uh, the presentation or uh, yung mga slides ko will be showing parents but then I understand, I fully understand that some of us here are ate, kuya, tito, tita, but since these children are under our care, so which means tayo na rin yung parang tumatayo nilang parents. So, yun lang. But whenever I say parents, I mean it is also you. So, if there are signal problems, so kung kunwari may mga glitches, just let me know. You can chat me or you can, uh, Sir Jason can text me para we can respond it. Alright? So, let's start. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So our goals for today. So as I've said, um, nowadays, no, due to this global uh, pandemic, yung COVID nineteen, uh, children are very prone to this um, to the negative emotions such as anxiety. But again, as parents, no, um, it is our duty to support them and to actually to help them overcome this uh, negative emotion. So our goals for today first is to reflect as parents, as carers, you know, as caregivers, to reflect on, our, on ourselves. And then later on, we will learn more about them. We will learn more about their emotions, uh, their actions. You know? And then finally, we'll be able to practice some exercises that can help them. Uh, overcome this uh, negative emotions. All right? So, okay. So, let us remember uh, if kung mapapit or kung maaalala niyo yung last travel history niyo no, kung kayo ay nakasakay na sa airplane. So, ang sinasabi lagi ng flight attendant, di ba? Uh, put the oxygen first on you, tapos sa child. No? So, laging tayo muna. Laging Lagi dapat isipin na uh, we cannot give what we do not have. So, ganun din as caregivers, as parents, no? Um, kaya nga, meron ako kaninang meme nakita sa Facebook or, or isang infographic na sinasabing self-care is a must, no? And ganun din tayo, kahit na we are responsible to children, so we should also be responsible to ourselves, alright? So, there. Okay, so... Um, Reflect. All right. So, the first activity na gagawin natin or the first exercise na gagawin natin is actually called uh, grounding. So, grounding, uh, we do this exercise every time we feel uh, anxious. No? Kasi most of the time when we feel anxious, our tendency is to think far, to think deeper, so we lost the moment. Okay, but then our goal is really actually to be here, to be present. Okay, so right now, so I want you to relax, no? sit in your, on your comfortable position, and we try to breathe. All right? So when we're breathing, so we focus on our breathing as we inhale and as we exhale. So for today... We will use our senses 
as we do. All right, I will guide you and I will invite you, maybe if you're comfortable, you can close your eyes or you can look at one part of your room so that you can focus on the breathing and then followed by your senses. All right, so I invite some of you to close your eyes, focus on your breathing as you inhale, and as you exhale. Notice the air coming in your nose and you blow through your mouth. Slowly, we will use our eyes. I want you to slowly open your eyes and look at the things that you're grateful for. It could be your children. It can be the roof in your house. You have a home. Or it can be material things. And now we go back to our breathing. So as you inhale, and as you exhale. Now we will use our hands. I want you to touch or reach something that is important for you. It could be your gadget, your laptop, it could be your bed, can be the sofa you're sitting right now. And then we go back again to our breathing. Now I invite you to close your eyes again and focus on your breathing. Now we will use your sense of smell. I want you to observe in your environment, what do you smell? Is it the scent of your room? Of your hair? Or your child? And then we focus again in our breathing. Now I want you to focus on your ears, listen to your surrounding. What can you hear aside from my voice? Is it an aircon, a fan? Now I want you to focus on my voice. As you breathe in and as you breathe out, I want you to focus on my voice telling you, you are here, you are present, and you are safe. Now we go back to your breathing. As you inhale and as you exhale. As you breathe, I want you to explore yourself. Explore your emotions. What do you feel right now? Was it, what is this that your body telling you? I want you to explore it as you breathe in and as you breathe out. I will count one to three, and on our third breath, you will complete this phrase. I feel blank and it's okay. One, inhale, exhale. Two, inhale, exhale. Three, in 
inhale, exhale. I feel a little bit anxious and that's okay. Good job. Okay, so I hope you did try it. So you can now open your eyes, slowly open your eyes, and let's be in the moment. All right. So I hope you know, maybe some of us feel tired, feel dizzy, hopefully not feeling sleepy, no? Kasi, of course, this afternoon, masarap magsyesta. Pero if you feel relaxed, that's very good because that's the goal of this exercise. Because when we are very anxious, we find it hard to relax. So maybe you can try this on your own next time. All right. Now let's go. Okay, sorry. All right. So children feel what their parents or caregivers feel. No? I've read an article uh, the past few weeks na nagsasabi that Children are very sensitive. So if you will observe your children, no, sometimes siguro kung mapapansin nyo, even before the lockdown, they will ask you, Ma, galit ka? O kaya, Ma, pagod ka ba? O kaya, Dad, are you okay? No? Kasi they also feel what we feel. So it is important for us to reflect on our emotions. And kanina, what I told you, I feel a little bit anxious. But then, it's okay. No? It's okay to feel those negative emotions. It's okay to feel anxious sometimes. Alright? So maybe we can ask ourselves, am I feeling anxious? So, we have here the boxes on the right area, no? Na it can be our guide. So, kasi when we're feeling anxious, so there are four things happening inside our body. So, the cognitive one, emotions, physical, and then the behaviors. Alright? So, let's go. Okay. So, what can you see, no? So, sometimes kasi, these uh, four aspects can intertwine, no? So, pwedeng sabay-sabay or pwedeng ito muna and this one. Okay, but then, just to give you a little bit of structure which happens most of the time, it will start with our thoughts, yung cognitive. So, as you can see from the list, no? Most of them are fears. Fears of dying, fears of getting crazy, no? Meron pang mga thoughts na mamamatay na ba ako. So, and that makes us feel Nervous. So, nagkakaroon tayo ng tension sa body. So, we feel shaky, no? So, ganun. So, tendency parang lalong nag-validate yung thought natin na negative. Okay? So, most of these thoughts are negative. And then, after the emotions, after we feel nervous, ano na nangyayari sa atin? Nagpapalpitate na tayo or we increase our heart rate, no? There's shortness of breath, hindi ka na makahinga. Okay? Kasi parang nag, ano na siya, nagiging clouded na yung brain mo na I'm stuck. Okay? Ang layo na nang narating ng mind mo. And it, it is very difficult for you to relax. That's why very important to learn the relaxation techniques that will suit you. Alright? And then, uh, kapag nagiging habit yung ganitong um, experience, it becomes nagiging behavior na. So, tendency, we avoid the situations na magpapaalala sa atin nung last natin na nakafeel tayo ng anxiousness. It can be important activities like, for example, getting into elevator or going outside o kaya yung iba naman, getting into the car. So, i-avoid na natin siya. And that's why it becomes unhealthy already for us. Kasi we are very scared to feel that experience again. Okay? There. So, in this case, now I want you to know that getting help is okay. Alright? So, this one, I made an infographic. I think uh, this one is last year. I uh, Last year, last week. Okay? So, parang na intention is really want people to know that it's okay to get help. 
Okay. So for example, as you can see, addressing common mental health concerns. So these are some um, situations related with feeling anxious. So for example, sleep problems, running thoughts. So yung kanina kaya tayo na grounding. Kasi kapag anxious ka, yung thoughts mo are very fast. Okay. And then feeling low. So I want you to know the first step that we can do is to examine ourselves. Maybe try the exercises that I taught that I taught you kanina, and then practice self care. And if support is available, of course, family is very important in us. No friends. Maybe if you have friends who are uh, mental health professionals, that's a plus. No, medyo libre tayo dun. But then, no, so. We encourage that it should be a working relationship. But then, if you feel that there is something else that you need help on, no, it's really okay to seek mental health professionals. So that includes us, psychologists, counselors, life coach, even a priest, diba? If you are very into spiritual coaching, so priests can be a big help to you, social workers, and of course, our psychiatrists, no? Who can help us to stabilize our yung mga brain um, systems natin. Okay? Also, the neurologist and sleep doctor. So it's okay. All right. So, but for today, uh, since we just need to reflect on us, but I want to focus more on our children. Okay. So we move forward with getting to know our children. So maybe before the ECQ, no. So ang buhay natin. We go to work. We wake up in the morning. We go to work. We go back home. So there is less time that we deal with our children. So siguro ito na yung pinakamatagal na oras na kailangan natin silang intindihin or because no parang it's it can be a great blessing also for you but it can also be a big challenge no kasi it's new eh it's bago sa atin but then so at least we're here now and we are ready to get to know them more and to learn more about them all right so there okay now i have read an article no say, saying there na your cell phone or your gadget is not a babysitter, no? So, parang it is very convenient for us to just hand over our gadget and, oh, sige, maglaro ka na, no? O kaya, oh, sige, wag ka na maingay, no? So, it's very convenient. However, no, um, we have to ask ourselves the right questions, okay? Is this just a phase, no? Our children is showing symptoms of uh, difficulty, so is this just a phase or is this something serious? Okay. So we have to be there to know deeper. Okay. When we are being there, it's not only na nandun ka sa area. It should be physically, mentally, emotionally, you are there. All right? Okay. So... Let's ask the right questions, no? So the first question is, what is my kid experiencing? No? Is it a stress or worry or what we call as anxiety phase? No? And, or is it something as serious like an anxiety disorder? Okay, so right now, uh, why is it I'm using stress or worry? One thing is that words are very... What you call this? Parang it's it should be we should be careful in giving words, no? So if we will say to our children, "Oh, na anxiety ka na," okay? So ano yung magiging dating nun sa bata? So parang may sakit na ako, mamamatay na ba ako? Okay? So we avoid those big words, no? Instead, we use some stress, worry, okay? Because anxiety phase can be normal. So, ano ba yung mga anxiety phase na maaalala natin when we were still children? For example, when your mom or your dad will go to work, ayan na, magbawala ka na, no? So, iiyak ka na and all. So, it's anxiety phase. What else? For example, ako, nung ako ay nursery, 
No, the first time my mom left me in the school, so I was very anxious. I keep on looking kung nandun pa ba yung mama ko. And then, so it's anxiety phase. These are normal. Okay? These are normal situations. Okay? Yeah. So anxiety phase allow our children to learn their emotions. To learn that they're having a hard time or something was taken from them. Okay? So they learn from this anxiety phase. Okay? But, of course, most, if not all of us, are experiencing discomfort at this moment. Kasi, syempre, it's valid. We are facing danger, which is yung COVID-19. So, at least, so, from there, no, hindi lang natin, hindi lang tayo ang vulnerable. Hindi lang porque tayo yung responsible at home, tayo lang may karapatan maging anxious. But also, our children. Okay, and we have to help them. All right, so let's try to identify and get a deeper look. Okay, so if it is an anxiety phase, so kung kunwari if it's stress or worry or an anxiety phase, so it is temporary, manageable, and harmless. Okay, so it is temporary. Okay, it is temporary when we say that we were able to address the stress, and then the kid will go back. No? Go back na siya sa normal mood niya. So, for example, yung toy niya, nakuha, kinuha ng kapatid, for example. So, iiyak. Iiyak siya. But then, kung naibalik yung toy, tatahan na siya. So, it means, no, the, the experience of the kid is temporary. Alright? Manageable. Why is it? How, how are we going to say that it's manageable? So just the same thing. If we will address the stressor, okay, and the children, and the child will go back to sa kanyang normal mood, so it's still manageable. So for example, so si mommy, umalis, or si dad, umalis papuntang work. But then, the caregiver or the yaya, okay, will be there, no? Oh, don't cry na. Ito, laro na lang tayo. Okay? So, and then after that, nag-go back na sa normal mood. So, ibig sabihin, it's just an anxiety phase. Alright? And then, harmless. So, harmless means there are no dysfunctions. So, hindi malilimit yung um, experience ng kid sa kanyang childhood. So, for example, Sang araw, naglaro. Okay, nadapa, nagkasugat. Okay, so after that, no, we attend to the child, no, ginamot natin yung kanyang sugat, and then we say, no, it's okay, it's just an accident, no, gagamotin natin yan, and all. But then, kung kunwari, that experience was so remarkable na hindi na lumalabas yung bata, kasi ayaw niya ng maksidente. So that means we are limiting already yung kanyang experience being a child. So perhaps, no, siguro, pwede rin nagkulang tayo, baka nung, napa, nung nadapa siya, pinagalitan natin, o kaya pinalo natin. So naging double whammy pa, naging double pa yung pain niya. Okay, and then, oh, and then those kind of um, um, address, pag-address sa mga bata, no, it will have a big impact in their memory. Okay? So, but let us remain attentive, preventive, and supportive. Okay? Kasi attentive, of course, no, these stressors, as I have said to you, can be an anxiety phase. But then, it can lead to, it can lead to something serious if we will not attend to it properly. Alright? We prevent, in a sense, that um, in a sense that we will not cause more harm to the child, no? Lalo na yung sa kanyang memory, sa kanyang experience, no? Telling the child that it's okay, it's an accident, no? Nobody likes it, but then, no, look, oh, you're okay now, di ba? So, giving them reassurance is a big help also. And that means also with us being supportive. Alright? Okay. So, Let's go. So how are we going to recognize some signs? No, kanina you, I was um, discussing with you some symptoms or some signs that you can observe to yourself no, as an adult. But as you can see to children, it's kind of different. It's a lot different. No? So for example, acting out. 
Okay, acting out, nagwawala na. May mga nakikita ako sa mall, no? Nagwawala sa floor and all. Okay? So, what else? Other acting out, sinasaktan niya yung kanyang kapatid. Okay? Without any reason. Okay? So, nag act out siya. What else? Eating difficulties. It's either, no? Ayaw kumain or kain ng kain. No? So, hindi na maawat. Okay, so probably there is something going on inside that child. Sleep problems. So some sleep problems include nightmares. Okay, so they have nightmares. O kaya uh, they will wake up in the middle of the night. Okay, so irritability, crying a lot. Okay, hindi maawat. Okay, but then these are stress, no? Stress indicators. Okay. So, tends to withdraw also. Ayan. So, ayaw na masyadong makipaglaro. Ayaw nang pumasok. Yan, some physical signs of ang sakit ng chan, masakit yung ulo. Okay. And also regression. So, what do I mean by regression? So, sometimes children will tend to go back to their, yung kanilang developmental milestones. For example, the tom sucking, nagbe bed wetting. So those are signs na our child is currently distressed. Okay? So, but they also include here, even though we are focusing on the young children, we also include the preteens and the teens kasi they're also important, right? So, you have to notice no, if they're going against the rules, so it means no, parang something is wrong with them. No, they show anger, irritability, they even show distrust on you, they don't want to talk to you, they don't want to talk to people. So, and then this one exhibiting poor self-esteem, they don't like themselves, no, they're very negative, and even some in involving in risky behaviors like um, substance use or or other risky behaviors. So for example, going out, like for example, ngayon, we are on lockdown, but then our teenager will go out. So it means no, our uh, these children are currently on stress. So, they prefer isolation. Alright. So, the, another question that we have to ask ourselves, is it okay for my kid to be stressed? And the answer is, sabi ni Yerks, Dodson model of stress arousal and performance, it's a yes. No? Why? Okay, so as you can see, there is pressure, the below, and then there's performance. So, in this graph, no? We can remember ourselves. Okay, let's go back to let's go back to our childhood. Let's remember the pressure that we feel. You know? So if there is no pressure, there is no stress. You know? As you can see, boredom. Okay, ang baba ng performance kasi walang opportunity. Okay, that is why I'm telling you, kahit lada pa yung anak mo. No, outside, palabasin mo pa rin. Kasi kung hindi mo siya bibigyan ng opportunity, no, as you can see, the performance will always be low. Alright? But the other side of the graph, too much pressure. Let's remember our childhood. Okay? Kung yung parents ba natin, are we being pressured to study hard, no? To get high grades, to be number one. So as you can see, they will feel Ill health, anxiety, panic, pain, breakdown. Okay, so, but then, with the right amount of pressure, there is high motivation to peak performance. Okay, anxiety can be a good, can be a good tool for us to be better, to do better. Okay, but if it's done too much, if it's too much, it will break us okay so is it okay for my kid to be stressed yes okay but i want you to be supportive on them and to put less pressure on them all right okay just the right amount of pressure all right so what is anxiety disorder so as i've said kanina no if it's anxiety phase we remember temporary manageable, and then, what else, Isa, is ang 
temporary, manageable, and I forgot the other one. <laughs> okay, I forgot the other one. Temporary, manageable, and harmless. Ayan, buti na lang I have kodigo. <laughs> okay, so temporary, manageable, and harmless. So kung kunwari, it's not, no? so it's, it's not, um, okay, it's not, um, it's not uh, it's not temporary it's not manageable and it's not harmless no so it means na baka it's a, it is a serious thing no? so we also have anxiety disorders for children okay so it can be um, from biological and or environmental factors so for example uh, from the line of the family no merong ganoong um, genetic um, predisposing no factor and also it could be an environmental so for example there is um, experience of disaster no? okay. so it can also um, have a big impact or a major life experience so for example if a child is exposed with trauma you know, with abuse so it these disorders are prone to happen Okay, so general anxiety disorder, so our children tend to overly worry or overthink with a lot of things. So it can be problem in the family, problem at home, no? or problem in school. So lahat na pinoproblema niya, it's so general. Okay. Another is the obsessive compulsive disorder. So there is an obsession of thoughts. Okay, so this is most of the time negative. Okay, so kung kunwari, the obsession would be uh, my mom and dad uh, will be in danger. So, okay, so kung kunwari, ganun yung obsession, no? Pag umalis yung mommy, mommy daddy ko, sila'y mapapahamak unless I do this ritual. So, doon papasok yung compulsive. So, for example, I need to wash my hands all the time and all. O kaya, I need to do these things so that hindi sila mapahamak. But then, it's irrational, no? The thought is irrational. Lalo na ngayon, we have to be careful. So, since, um... This COVID-19, no, it is required for us to wash our hands, to keep ourselves healthy, no? So, let us not allow our children to develop this one, no? O maghugas ka, kailangan isang oras ka naghugas. So, yun yung mga time na hindi healthy, no? Na baka nagde-develop tayo ng something serious sa kanila. Okay, I've read an article saying that uh, those clients who has um, o OCD, no, uh, they're finding it hard to cope because they're, ano eh, parang nafi-feed yung thought nila na I'm going to die, so I need to wash my hands. Okay, so lagi tayo ang point of reference natin. Let's always be in the normal, in the healthy, no, just like yung kanina, right amount of pressure, so right amount of precautions. Okay. PTSD, so if a child experiences a traumatic event, for example, an abuse, no? lalo na ngayon, we have to be careful since we're always at home, children are prone with online um, parang sexual abuse. So, yun, so maraming gumagawa. So, it's very, very sad no, to know those information na rising ang ganong statistics. So, it can cause PTSD. You know what? No? Some of their parents will say, eh, hindi naman nahahawakan and all. But they do not know na it has a big effect on the mind of the kid. Okay? So, if they witness or they're the one the subject for a traumatic incident or they know somebody na uh, experience a traumatic event so for example no to children who are uh, their parents are out no in the hospital because they got sick no so it's very, it can be a traumatic for experience for them all right, panic disorder, no? so they experience some symptoms of shortness of breath, palpitations, hot flashes, so those things, okay? Separation anxiety disorder is common with toddlers, no? So kung tayo din, kung naaalala nyo before, no, parang ayaw natin na 
mawalay dun sa ating parents. So, it's hard, no? But then, what makes it uh, an anxiety disorder already, you know? So, if it's not temporary, if it's not manageable, and if it's causing harm already, hindi na siya makahinga, kakaiyak niya. Okay? So, that means, uh, nahihirap pa na siya. Okay? So, yan. And then, um, Social anxiety. No? This is common with teens. So teens experience sometimes, no, they they fear they are distressed with the negative evaluation na makukuha nila from other people. Okay, so they tend to withdraw. Selective mutism. So it means, no, they talk. They're talking inside the house. Pero when they go to school, when they go to other places, they do not talk at all. Okay, and then the last one would be specific phobia. Okay, so I remember, no, uh, most of the time, uh, pinapanakot natin yung mga bagay-bagay. For example, pinapanakot natin si Kuya Security Guard na napakabait, no? So, so sinasabi natin, oh, hala, yan na yung guard, yan na yung guard, no? So, no, it's a no-no. So, we should not do that. I've, uh, I have a story, no? Before, there is a Momo doll, no? Yung sa internet. But then, no, yung bata, hindi niya naman yung kilala. But then, yung parents, oh, wag mo tong papanoorin ha, wag mo tong papanoorin, wag mo tong titignan. So, yung bata lang doon siyang natakot. No? So, it's causing a lot of harm than safety for kids. Okay? So, we should prevent that. Okay. So, let's go. Okay, sorry. Uh, I have to go back. All right. So, what can I do as a parent? So, okay. So, ayaw niya mag-stay doon. <laughs> but then, okay. So, what can I do as a parent? So, it's very important that we give appropriate support all the way. So, I highlighted appropriate. Why? Because most of us, no? Most of our as parents, we tend to overly do things no for example we over protect no in a sense that we do not trust our children at all no? so it's not good because if it's uh, if we are not giving the opportunity uh, the chance for a child for our child to learn to commit mistakes not to learn from their mistakes no? we are not allowing them to become resilient okay so we are missing the opportunity but appropriate doesn't mean we should abandon them also you no know? for example you give the opportunity sige lumabas ka okay but then our support is lacking so ano mo we feel ng child natin so we they will feel insecure they will feel frightened okay so support all the way so maybe some of us um, some of us maybe ha uh, we have children who are who needs um, intensive attention, so it can be difficult most of the time. It can be it can be very challenging. But I remember my friend when we were in college, he would always tell me, "It's okay, friend. At least we have each other." No? So it, when she's saying that phrase. I feel calm. No? Parang sabi ko, I have this sense na, okay, I, at least I'm not alone. And also your children needs to feel that. Okay? They should feel na they're not alone. Even though hindi natin ma-attend kaagad yung difficult situation, yung pag-act out niya, no? But just to let this child feel na he or she is not alone is a big thing already. Right? So, we should always remember that. Okay? So, okay. So, start it. We should practice it. Okay? So, right now, attending this session, it doesn't mean na nasa loob lang natin lahat ng natutunan natin. It should not work that way. Alright? We have to practice. And this is only the beginning. This is only the start. Okay? Yeah. So, okay. When we remember, you no, know, when when we try to support our children, let's remember these five things. Okay, one, especially right now during quarantine, one is they deserve to know. Two, share, not scare. Okay. Number three, build some life skills. 
Okay, this is a good opportunity to learn life skills. Number four, structure in uncertainty. And number five, be the expert for each other. All right, let's go. They deserve to know because your children is just like you. Okay. So, so even though, no, they are children, even though na hindi sila yung nag-grocery sa labas, hindi sila yung nakakakita sa social media what is happening, no, they deserve to know because they can feel what you feel. Okay? Always remember that. And they are vulnerable. Okay? So, it is better, no, for them to ask questions to you. I remember one meme, okay, somebody shared this meme and it says, if you have a child who keeps on asking you, it's like you have a parrot stuck on your shoulder with a glue, no? So, parang, parang for me, ang dating sa akin, it can be a joke, but then it can be offensive, no? It seems like we don't want our, children's, our children to ask, which is wrong, no? Let us not stop our children to ask. Let's allow them to ask questions, to be curious. Kasi nandun yung learning, right? So, I want you to act. Okay, so I hope hindi ko na ito makakalimutan kasi meron na siyang, ano, meron na siyang palatandaan. So, act. So, our children can, can ask, why is it no school? Why am I not allowed to play outside? It's frustrating. I want to play outside. Why is everyone afraid? How are my friends? I don't see them anymore. I can't talk to them. I don't have their telephone numbers. So how are they? Or they, or they may be asking, are we safe? No, are we safe in this house? Am I safe? Okay, so let's remember you know, to act. A for ask. Okay, so always ask. Ask what they know. Okay, so anak, what do you know about COVID-19? So what do you know about coronavirus? Okay, why? So it's important to ask them no, kung ano yung alam nila. Kasi it can be a wrong information. It could be supplied by an older sibling na nananakot. So, for example, coronavirus, sige, magkakasakit ka, ganyan. Okay? So, tendency, they will be scared. So, maybe, if they are scared, no, hindi, hindi tama yung information, no? so, it will be difficult for them to process. That leads me to confirm, okay? So, confirm what they know, okay? So, it is our responsibility to make them aware but not to scare them, okay? So, that is why we have to choose the right words, you know, the right um, approach on how are we going to make them understand what is happening right now. And T for teach. Okay, so teach. We have different methods of teaching our children. So it depends. Sometimes it depends on their age. Sometimes it depends on their personality, on their way of thinking. All right, so let's find out. Okay, so, yeah. so these are some of the T, no? yung teach natin. So remember to avoid scaring them. So for children, for young children, siguro maybe as early as two years old, nakakaintindi na, gusto na ng storytelling. And then maybe hanggang seven. But I remember I was eight, nine, or ten. I still love storytelling. Even up to now, I love storytelling. So that can be a good way to um, approach the child, no? To to inform the child. So there are story books na available online that is related with um uh COVID-19. So later I will share I will share with you an excerpt of it, you no, know, and then uh through Sir Jason through CTPS I will send the materials that you can use, you no, know, when when you approach your child. Okay. So non-judgmental conversation this is applicable actually with preteens or teens but actually some children nagugulat nga ako ngayon no even as early as 3 years old para ng mama kausap no I was watching your me of showtime earlier no and then I was asking myself sobrang bata pa nito but then yung kanyang way of thinking is deep already so Non-judgmental conversation can also be an effective way. 
Okay? But then, without age uh, consideration, safety planning is very important. They have to be included in planning. So, even though sila yung pinakabata, no, we should not limit them and we should not exclude them from planning. Okay? On our safety. All right. So, I remember, so just a story to share with you. I hope I still have time, no? So, uh, when, when we were in college, no, we, we made a study about storytelling. So, so we tried to experiment a group of children. So, ano ba yung effective way for, for them to absorb, comprehend a story? No? So, we tried uh, auditory. So, nagkikwento lang kami over, ano lang. So, nagsasalita lang kami. And then, um... Okay, so, nagsasalita lang kami and then, um, yun, nakikinig yung mga kids. And then, we have visuals. So, we show them pictures, no? We show them the book. And then, and then the last one is role-playing. So, role-playing. Okay, so, nag, ano kami, kumuha kami ng mga volunteer. We include the children. So, yan. So, ganun. So, the important things to remember when you are storytelling is you be expressive. Okay, so kailangan OA tayo, no? Parang sabi ni Joko, you know, ang OA, no? So OA. Kasi it gets the interest of the child. So it's very important that you gain their interest, okay? Different sounds, expressions, gestures, and so they will all help. Kasi kung kunwari nagkikwento ka, isang araw si Juan at si Pedro ay naglakad. So walang kabuhay-buhay. So parang hindi sila interested makinig. So it's important doon. So back to my story, you know, when we were doing our research, so we found out na kids like visuals. So at this moment, so due to lack maybe uh, yun, lack of resources, we cannot go to the bookstore and buy a book. No, so, so we can print out the storybook no in online. Or if we don't have printer, maybe we can use our gadgets and look at it together while reading. Okay? So, kung kunwari, nagbabasa kayo, pareho, nasa lap mo yung kid, no? And then, you're reading it together. Okay? That can be good also. But, the results of our study found na kids love role play. So, they like to be involved. They want to play a character. So, mas ma-effective nila, mas nag instill yung learning na understand nila what's happening in the story. They are able to have an empathy no, doon sa role. So, we use props like, for example, blanket, toys, Okay, what else? So, it could be papers. So, I remember, no, nung bata ako, we were using a lot of blankets. So, ginagawa namin tent, ginagawa namin kapa, no? So, lahat ng pwedeng gawin. Okay, so give them roles to play and be more affectionate and always insert fun, no? So, I remember my mom would tell us a story and then, in the middle of the story, sometimes she will tickle us, no? Parang, kunwari, uh, parang another, another um, gesture of saying, Hoy, bakinig ka sa akin. So, yan. So, that's also okay. So, don't forget to insert fun. Alright. So, this is a story. Okay? It's entitled, uh, My Hero Is You. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, My Hero Is You. The story is all about COVID-19, so, meron doon yung child, no? She wants to help everybody, okay? Then, parang merong, ano, merong dragon, okay? And then, another story, kung gusto nyo ng Tagalog, I will also share with you, yung title is Kaya Ko Rin. So, the story of that is yung kid, uh, nagtataka siya bakit walang tao sa bahay nila except for his lola. So, kasi yung daddy niya pala is parang, uh, barangay worker, mommy niya is a nurse, and then her, his sister is a newscaster. So parang din noon, how are you going to process or how are we going to teach them no, yung ganong value na sometimes no, children will feel or will be um, curious no, ano ba, ano ba nangyayari? Alright. So, now is the time 
to demonstrate okay, how our storytelling will go. Okay, so, okay. So, I will read it in front of you. Maybe use some props, okay? Para you get to, you get to know no, kung paano ba yung tamang technique. How are we going to tell a story, okay? So, it, this way, parang since very limited tayo no, ng opportunity. So, medyo ano to, visual and ano lang, and auditory, okay? Pero, I will do my best no, so that you can also relate, which you can do with your children. Okay? So, once upon a time, so Sarah laid in bed that night and did not feel like a hero at all. She felt upset. She wanted to go to school, but her school was closed. She wanted to see her friends, but it was not safe. Sarah wanted the coronavirus to stop scaring the world. She said, heroes have superpowers, she said to herself, closing her eyes to sleep. What do I have? Suddenly, a gentle voice whispered her name into darkness. Sarah, Sarah, Hello? Am I clear? Yes, Pa. Yeah. So, where did I stop? <laughs> yeah, nawala po audio. Thank you, ma'am. Johnny Lynn. Okay, so... Okay, wait. So, our internet is betraying us. Okay, pero let's not allow. Ayan, si Sarah, Sarah. Okay, thank you very much, Sir Lazen. All right, sige, let's go back. Let's go back to our story. Some technical problems in our story bearing. Okay, so suddenly, a gentle voice whispered her name in the darkness. Sarah, Sarah. Who's there? Sarah whispered back. What do you need to be a hero, Sarah? The voice asked her. I need a way to tell all the children in the world how to protect themselves so they can protect everyone else, said Sarah. So, what do you need me to be? The voice asked. I need something that can fly, something with the big voice, and something that can help. With the whoosh, no, something amazing stepped into the moonlight. All right. So, you know, so as you've noticed, I use different intonations, different expressions, no? Even kung kunwari, uh, we can insert, no? For example, yung whispering the name of Sarah, it can be parang scary, no? Kasi baglang may bumubulong. And then with a whoosh, no? So, it, I use the blanket as parang element of surprise. So it's important you are very creative, okay? Para you will gain their interest, okay? And remember, insert fun, okay? So after reading the story, okay, wait. So there's a message. Okay. Nice storytelling. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Mission. Okay, so, okay, so uh, after that, no, we have to process the story. Okay, we have to ask them, hindi yung nagkwento ka lang. Okay, you have to ask them na, oh, what happened in the story? Or who's your favorite character? Or what is your favorite part of the story? So, it's important that you ask about it. Okay? So, actually, um, I discovered a page, yung Play It Forward. So, meron sila dong post nung uh, storybook. And then, they recommend some questions that you can ask after reading after storytelling, okay? So, play it forward. 
All right, so let's go now to the preteens or the teens or even children who can already uh, comprehend this um, information. So first, so let's talk about we we make sure it is non-judgmental. What do you mean by non-judgmental? So for example, our children is saying, "Ma, natatakot ako, ma, baka mamatay na tayo, ma." So instead of saying, "Ano ka ba? Nababaliw ka na ba?" So hindi dapat ganoon. We should not be judgmental on their emotions. Okay? We should learn how to acknowledge them. So we ask about the issue. So for example, we tell them no what is coronavirus. So as we know, no, so this is kind of virus that infect the respiratory function of a person. No, some can be ill, greatly ill, but some are not. No, so when we are telling this information, we choose their words. Okay, I will share also with you. So meron akong tatlong utang. No, I will share with you also an article. No, na um, it's about what should we tell to children no, about coronavirus? So in that way, we will not scare them no, na parang magiging traumatic um, ano to, experience. No? So meron pa rin doon, it's a balance of facts and reassurance. Okay? Because yun yung importante. So is coronavirus dangerous? We will say yes, no, but our, doc our doctors are trying their very best, our scientists are, uh, are trying their best to resolve it already. Yeah. So as you can see, no, I am saying the bad news, but I am counter, uh, also parang sinasabi ko rin yung counter response niya, no? at least parang but, okay, however, okay, so para it's kind of reassuring pa rin for the child, na hindi siya ma-feel na stuck, helpless, hopeless, okay? So, why do so many talk about this virus? So, for example, we tell, oh, kasi uh, nag-spread siya sa iba't ibang bansa, so marami nagkakasakit, that's why marami yung nag-uusap about it. But, the good thing, kapag marami yung nag-uusap, it means that they are making solutions about it. Okay, so we just have to wait for them to come up with a vaccine, for example. Ganun. So, will it pa? So, matatapos na ba ito? So, hopefully, no, this will pass already. So, we can, you can go back to school. Mommy can go to work already. No, but up to now, we're still waiting. And our scientists are doing their best. So, let's not worry, okay, too much. What can I do? So, ano ba yung mga pwede nilang gawin? How to protect themselves, for example, washing their hands, keeping the room clean, the house clean. So, yeah. And then, we ask about themselves. So, what are your thoughts about it? Okay. So, what are your thoughts about coronavirus? What do you feel right now? Okay? So, kapag kunwari nakaka-feel siya ng mga negative emotions, let's not judge it. Okay? Let's not belittle it. For example, ba't ka natatakot? Eh, hindi naman ikaw yung lumalabas para mag-grocery. So, no. Okay? We have to acknowledge. Alright? So, what's bothering you at the moment? Okay? What can you do about your feelings? How can I support you? Okay? So, yeah. Okay, so the safety planning, so very, very important that, um, number one, we keep everybody healthy. So, kunwari, sasabihin natin, so sabi ko nga kanina, dapat lahat kasali. Okay, so for example, oh, that's, that's why it's important we take our vitamins. For example, ikaw, what's your vitamins? So, kunwari, uh, Celine drops, so, yun yung mga nauna ko nag-isip, no, kasi... Batang Celine. So, pag kanari, oh, you take it diligently, ha? Para lagi tayong healthy. Ganon din si kuya, si ate, si mommy. Okay? So, ano yung mga ways? Responsibilities at home, no? Kami, when we were children, I remember, even though we have a helper, no? Uh, we are required to make our bed, to pack away, no? I remember my nephew ngayon, kapag nagbe-video call kami, meron siyang, ano, meron siyang song about packing away, no? About uh, cleaning the, the toys. So, siyang magligpit ng kanyang mga toys, no? So, as early as that, uh, maganda na ma-instill sa kanila yung responsibility, okay? Na, sa kanila yon. And then, showing respect. 
Okay, why? Showing respect kasi even though you're inside the house, no, sana there is respect for privacy, respect for own schedule. So, kung kunwari, schedule ko ngayon para mag-drawing. But then, the other sibling, no, uh, kukunin yung kanyang mga colors. The figures, tayo yung may responsibility to mediate on them. Okay? To process it correctly. Okay? And then, schedule a family. So, I hope there is still a common time. So, merong alone time, merong family time. Okay? So, may ganong balance. Okay, so building life skills at home. Yan, so pupunta na This is the best time to teach life skills. Okay, so right now, okay, we can teach these three life skills. Relaxation techniques because they will bring this even when they become adults already. Yeah. Okay, if we will be able to teach them how to relax, no, there is a big possibility that they won't experience getting anxious at the very severe, um, at the very severe part. Okay? If we'll be able to teach them the peace corner, no, we are teaching them that it's okay to withdraw for a while if you're feeling angry, you're sad, you feel negative. No, It's okay to withdraw for a while, you process yourself, you do not react, but you respond to your negative emotions. Okay, So that's a very important life skill that they need to learn. The worry jar, no? we have to express our negative emotions in a productive way. No, We write it, no? and then we talk about it when we have time, and we ask help from other people. So this skill I want you to remember that we have to teach them when they are calm and ready, okay? Not yung nagwawala na sa mall, nagsasabi kang, mag-relaxation technique tayo, okay, ganito. So, hindi ganon, okay? So, it's safe to learn, okay? So that they can use these skills when they are in the middle of a crisis or in the middle of a distress, okay? So, important yun. Okay, so let's do this relaxation techniques first. All right, so I'm going to teach you uh, four, four skills. No? So, mindful breathing, actually, it can be creative for children. So, kanina, nag-mindful breathing tayo. We just focus on our breath. No? We acknowledge the, emo the, the thoughts that are coming, but then we go back. We go back to the breathing. So, for children, actually, a very um, I've learned something about the balloon breathing. So, balloon breathing is that you are touched. We will touch our tummy. So, every time we Every time we inhale, so it goes big, okay? So for example, and then if we exhale naman, so medyo iliit yung balun natin, okay? So we inhale like this, and then exhale, okay, lumiliit yung balloon. So important na, okay, let's blow our balloon, let's do mindful breathing. So inhale, and then exhale. So you do it, for example, 10 times of doing that, just focus on the balloon. As mindful breathing that I've learned is using our hands. So... If you can see it, no, so uh, maybe I can stop sharing for a while. Okay, so can you see me? Yeah, and so uh, this one, we will use our fingers. So I call this uh, finger breathing. No? So we use our finger, yeah, no? you, we will use our finger to trace the corners of our fingers. No? So we do that, we do this, and yeah, so it goes up and down. But right now, we do it with breathing. So if it's inhale, so yung mga pataas. So inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. All right. So it's very um, helpful because uh, you are focused on the movement of your finger, no? When you trace it, so tendency, yung attention mo, yung mind mo is just. Focus on what you're doing at the moment. Because as I've said, when we are very anxious, we think further, we think deeper, we are lost. Okay, so they so we have to teach them to focus. Okay, other others naman would also do tummy breathing. So they will put, for example, a toy. Yeah, si Batman kasi ang available at this time. Okay, they will put it on their tummy and then they will breathe. So titingnan nila si Batman or yung toy nila na umaak full breathing. So if for example, they're very upset, no, they want to relax, so we remind them, oh, do tummy breathing. Okay, do balloon breathing or use your fingers. Okay, so that's very helpful. The muscle re read about it, so it's, ano siya eh, parang we put tension on a part of a body and then we release the tension while we're breathing out. So for example, right now, kunari our fist. So ngayon, so gagawin natin siya, madiin na madiin as we inhale, and then we release as we exhale. All right? So we put tension and then we, re we release B, for example. No, yung pag kunari nakataas yung kamay, you're reaching it, reaching, and then release. Okay. So, so it's also called a muscle relaxation. For example, they're very angry, no? They want to punch somebody. Okay. So kunari yun yung mas maganda natin, no? You do your muscle relaxation. What is it? Close your fist, no? Release. Okay, put some tension and then release. Okay, you breathe out. You breathe in and then you breathe out. All right? 
visualization includes concentration, okay? So we ask our child to close their eyes, okay? And then, well, what is it, uh, your picture of a calm place? Okay, so for example, it can be their playground, it can be their school. So, and we try to think about story, kung ano nakita niya. And then every time is feeling, he or she's feeling upset, no? Okay, try to visualize your calming place. So what is it? Try to imagine mommy and you are playing in the playground. Okay, so, yun yung mas ma-divert yung attention nila with uh, something positive. Okay? And then the massage. I remember I met a mom doing this one. No? So, she has a kid who has um, uh, autism. No? So, uh, they're very sensitive with their body. But then, if it's mommy, no, he, he's, he gets calm. So, whenever, no, so sometimes, you touch ni mommy, no, para siyang merong mga drizzle. Okay? Drizzle sa body. And then, it gives relaxation also. So for example, at night, no, mommy, I feel upset. I feel very anxious. No? Okay, let me, let mommy do the drizzling. So, yun na. Hindi lang siya pang tiktok. <laughs> okay? So, pero din siyang good, um, good uh, way, no? Good effect for our children. Okay? Sige. Okay, so the Peace Corner, I've learned this from, sorry, I've learned this from one of our directors, Miss Jazz. So she shared it with me, no, na ginagawa with um, sa America, no, sa US. So they call it Peace Corners at home. I remember when I was a child, I have a Peace Corner. Pero di ko yun alam as technically Peace Corner. Pero in that Peace Corner, I remember uh, nandun yung mga puzzles ko, nandun yung mga paper dolls ko. So whenever I'm upset with my kuya or with my little brothers or sister, so I go there. No? And then I play with my puzzles, I play with my paper dolls, No, I try to calm down. Okay? So it's important that it's comfortable and safe. So hindi yung merong mga harmful objects around. Okay? Kasi for example, if it's if the kid is too angry, no, it, uh, he or she may hurt himself no? kapag merong mga harmful objects. Okay? We should include some toys, pause, and then some worksheets. Okay? So worksheets which I will also share. So ilan yung utang ko? So apat na yata. Okay? So worksheets na you can also include in that piece corner. Na parang magtatanong what are they feeling? How did they react? How should they respond? Okay? And so Sometimes, in America, they use timer. Parang meron siyang five minutes timer na parang to calm down. Pero sabi naman ng teacher na if they need longer time, it's also okay. Alright? So, I'm quite near na. Okay, medyo nag-overtime na. Okay, so we can use this at home as a family activity. So, we have a jar. No? And then every time we worry something, we okay, write it down. You can put your name if you like. Or you can also do it anonymously. Pero for sure, yung handwriting, eh, obvious. But then it's okay. okay so, we put it in worry time. So, what do you do with your family worry time? You solve together. So, you pick a worry. So, you read it all together. So how are we going to solve this worry? So what should we do? So in this way, we're teaching our children they're not alone with their worry. We're teaching them some problem-solving techniques. No, There may be worries that we don't have answer, but then we can always tell them at least we have each other. Right? So there. Okay. So I'm almost, almost done. So it's structure and new normal. So I want you to talk about it. Okay, so kung kunwari, the leader of the house. So, it, hindi pwedeng self-serving na ikaw lang yung boss. So, kailangan pinag-uusapan ito. I picked this kind, this picture kasi it has a balance of, it has L, no? Parang list and balance. So, we, there is a balance of free time, uh, academic time, and then some quiet time, some mix. No? Hindi, hindi mafeel ng bata na, why am I always working? Bakit ako na lang lagi nag, uh, ano dito? Hindi na ako nag-enjoy, no? So, it's important to be a balance. And then, commit to it. So, commit to it. So, we remind our children, no? oh, it's your time. It's your creative time already. Oh, what should you do? Okay, for example, oh, I'm so lazy or I don't want to do it. no. And then maybe that's the time you have to process it. Kasi maybe the schedule is not working for him or her. So, you, back to tea, no? talk about it. So, what's wrong? Should we should we uh, limit or should we decrease the creative time? Why is it not helping you? Okay, so, we try to process it together. So, TLC no? so, also stands for Tender Loving Care. But also... Want you to remember in doing a schedule, talk about it, list and balance, and then commit to it, all right? So, finally, be the expert for each other. So, right now, you are trying to be an expert. You want to know the best practices. You want to know those as carers, no? But then, you have to remember your mindful parenting. It's somehow broad. It's a broad um, uh, aspect. But then, if you will read more about it, so maybe I'll, I'd like you to remember, observe respond and listen. Okay, observe. We don't only observe when there is pain. Okay, so we have to observe even during fun. Okay, so for example, well, no, but then I hope we observe par as parents, no, as caregivers, no, all the time when they play, when they make fun, when they imagine things, we want you to observe. Okay, respond. Why not react? Okay, because every time we react, it is impulsive and it can be destructive. No, so when we respond, 
we look down, we look deeper on ourselves. How am I going to respond to my kid productively so that he or she will not feel offensive? Because most of the time, no, um, we uh, parents uh, tend to decrease the self-esteem of the kid because because of reacting and not responding. So it's important for us to learn that. Okay, and listen. Why listen? So we are used to tayo yung give, 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 pagalit, o kaya pangaral, advice, no? But we forget to listen. So it's important for us na yung children natin is comfortable to us to tell stories, no? That's why my clients and their parents, I'm very happy when they're telling me na, oh, nakikwento nga po yan, ganito, ganyan. So natutuwa ako, mas gusto ko yun, no? And then some, sana ma-allow natin yung children natin to tell us, ma, nagigalit ka na naman, o kaya pa, mainit ulo mo, no? So para tayo din, kasi syempre we are too strong that we react impulsively. But then, if you will listen, no, kung kunwari, yung response mo from, ma, nagagalit ka na naman. Okay? You breathe. Alright, sorry. Oo nga, nagagalit ako. Okay? So, you acknowledge. So, you don't take it as ano, an insult to you. No? So, you have to listen to your children as well. Because I'm very sure you will learn a lot. Okay? Alright. So, just going back. So, from today, uh, from kanina, round two something. So, we've learned how to reflect as parents, no? as caregivers, as parental figures. We learned to reflect on our emotions and it's okay to get help. Alright? We have learned something to our children. No? Maybe their actions are telling us that they're not okay. And we have to listen. And then, practice our support. So, the, the techniques that I thought you will remain as techniques if you will not practice it, okay? So, it's very, very important. So, just like the two pictures above, no, as parents, as caregivers, you choose. You can choose your kids to be, to be happy during this quarantine or you can make them feel bored and feeling helpless. So, it's really up to you. So, teach your friends. It's just until 3.30, no, but then their whole hours is with you already, all right? So, thank you very, very much for listening and for attending this session. So, I hope I was able to help you with some of the best practices that parents and caregivers can do. So, I wish your family to be safe and healthy all the time. So, thank you very much and Sir Jason can now come in. So, thank you. Yes, thank you very much, teacher friends. Uh, I really enjoy your discussion. Yeah, sorry, like overtime. Ah, oh nga, medyo ano, limited yung oras. Pero... Uh, worth it naman kasi ang dami. Ako, me personally, I really enjoyed the discussion. Uh, our other participants enjoyed it as well. So, parang ano eh, na- na-realize ko na tuloy kung bakit yung mga clients mo. <laughs> <laughs> so, I hope you guys enjoy yes. our 